Hey, I'm still testing out new recipes. In the meantime, here's the second part of the Hong Kong vlog. In my last vlog, I distressed myself to the sounds of 90s video game music to escape the laughably outdated in-flight entertainment system. Another thing about that plane I forgot to mention in the last video, the in-flight entertainment system still uses those old hi A tape cassette tracks. Can you imagine trying to view your in-flight movie on the same format my dad used to shoot old home videos with? Oh, sorry, I must have taken over that. Thankfully, my mild boredom ended when my plane finally touched down in Hong Kong. Okay, I finally landed here at Hong Kong Airport. And look what's here to greet me. I'm a long ass all the way to the immigration desk. <laughs> With that scary glimpse into the not-too-distant future behind me, I grabbed my bags and made my way to the arrivals hall. Now, there are a few options from getting from the airport into town. Now, you can take an overpriced taxi, get stuck in the infamous Hong Kong traffic, and pay more for hidden toll fees. Or you can be like me, grab yourself an octopus card, and take the airport express train. It's a high-speed rail line, it costs about $12 US, and it gets you to the middle of Hong Kong in under 25 minutes. I mean, come on, I'm going faster than the freaking cars. Okay, I have to come clean about something. I'm not really the Chad Traveler. Once my train arrived at Kowloon Station, I wanted to take a taxi from the station to my hotel. And I made the very dumb mistake of assuming taxi drivers would speak English. Maybe not fluently, but just enough. Listen, just because Hong Kong used to be a British colony does not mean everyone there speaks English. So, my, with my first taxi driver, I told him where I wanted to go in English, but because of the awkward language barrier, we ended up going nowhere, literally. And of course, I got a new taxi driver and I showed him the address to my hotel, but again, because of the language barrier, he dropped me off at the wrong hotel. So I had to allow my big heavy bags to my actual hotel. So there's a lesson. Never assume people will speak English. My advice, if you need to take a taxi somewhere, whether it's in Hong Kong or anywhere in China, have the destination of where you want to go in Chinese and hand it to your taxi driver. With that painful experience behind me, I decided to get some traditional Hong Kong cuisine. So I decided to take the MPR there. I think it might be rush hour. So I'm at this place called Cam's Roast Goost. And as you can see, the line is long, but it's worth it. I mean, it's Michelin star. There's uh, been a bit of a bump on the road. Um, one of the hostess gave me these. It just basically means I can't have my roast goose with a side of rice. Oh well, I guess I'll have to substitute it with more meat. While I was waiting in line, I decided to entertain myself. Now that's what I call quitting while you're ahead. This duck is a no-body. Probably should have started with this. Once I sat down and had the duck, I gotta say, it was the best thing I had while I was in Hong Kong. The crispy skin, the juicy meat, and the real kicker is that nice layer of melted fat in between. Ah, it's a lovely, beautiful, clear day in Hong Kong. And you know what that means? Breakfast. Yeah, I'm having from McDonald's for breakfast. It's, you know, it's just that a lot of places here in Hong Kong really do not open until after 10 o'clock. So, this is my only off day. Oh, come on, it's delicious, come on. Also, McDonald's in Hong Kong are completely cool and automated, and you get to pay with that octopus card I mentioned earlier. And on top of that, 
McDonald's in Hong Kong are the cheapest in the world. So I'm gonna be flying the drone out my hotel balcony. Couple reasons, I'm lazy. Also I wanna save energy because I'm gonna be walking around Hong Kong Island all day. I'll be fine as long as they don't fly it too high. Uh, hey, I'm gonna have to cut the uh, drone flying short. Uh, do you hear that uh, whir? Yeah, that's a helicopter. So yeah, I didn't want to get in trouble and destroy my drone. I wonder if there's a place in Hong Kong with good aerial views. The Hong Kong Ferris wheel, of course. I'm on the Star Ferry. It's a bit rocky. I sure hope the fishes love this taste of puked up McDonald's. It ain't all bad. Check out the view. Time to balance a thousand pounds of equipment on one hand while trying to remain my balance and not fall over. <sighs> I think I got on the wrong boat, cause look. The boat accidentally dropped me off here in Italy. Oh boy. Bamboo scaffolding. Is this something for the tourist, or is the owner of this building too cheap to get real scaffolding? Yeah, maybe I'm being unfair. Maybe the owner couldn't afford to get real scaffolding. That night, I went to a dim sum restaurant for dinner. Or this restaurant shares space with a mad scientist on You know all that, they provide me complimentary hot tea. That's what I dry for eats. However, uh, make a mug with a handle. It's a miracle I still have my fingerprints. I don't think you should try while you're in Hong Kong is these uh, mango drinks. Like equal parts delicious and weird. You get like, you get like bits of real mango, mango juice, and uh, mango jelly. But my night of food did not end there. So I went to the snack shop and they have a bunch of candies that we don't get in America. Some were awesome. Others, well... Stone, do you have to be to eat this? Cheddar cheese and chocolate. I'm gonna need a different kind of green substance if you expect me to eat that. I wonder why this is in the back of the store. This looks so delicious. So yeah, it's a Korean Canadian guy. A Korean. Purple sweet potato chip. You know, not like one of those sour blue potato chips. Oh, by the way, I still have that canister of purple potato chips. So it gives these things a little taste test. Mm. It's kind of like an Asian version of a blue corn tortilla chip. It has a bit of sweetness when it touches your tongue, then it turns into that nice savory potato chip flavor. The next day, I headed for the observation deck of the International Finance Center. But not before going down a hallway that was equal parts flashy and trippy. I'm in the end part of uh, 2001 Space Odyssey, apparently. Oh, but the cool designs did not stop there. Nice design of this elevator. 
It's like a, I'm in a music video. Okay, I just got off the elevator and I'm a little dizzy. But all that will be nothing once you get to see the clear view of Hong Kong and its hate. Eh, no big deal. Little color correction in post and... Now it looks like I went to the observation deck on a semi-clear day. We're here at the International Commerce Center and we are number 10. What's number one? Oh. oh yeah, the place I originally wanted to go to. Oh goody, souvenir photos. I can't wait to pay $25 for an obviously doctored picture. Souvenir photos are the biggest money wasters you can get while you're on vacation because this is something you can easily do in Photoshop. In fact, let me show you how to do it. First, set up a green screen without knocking anything over. Dress up in your most embarrassing tourist clothes and take a picture. Next, open up Photoshop, drag and drop your picture into the application, and using the quick selection tool, select yourself out and delete the background. Next, select the background of your choice, place yourself in front, and make a few final adjustments. And just like that, you've created your own fun and tacky souvenir photo for free. Post it on your Facebook wall next to your pictures of your niece and that obnoxiously unfunny political minion. Okay, so I got off and just dropped me off in a place called the Metal Zone. You know, as much as I enjoy traveling, I came across a realization when I was in Hong Kong. You know, here in America, I can get Indian food, I can get Italian, I can get Mexican, the list goes on. As opposed to Hong Kong where it's, well, all Chinese. Now, I did go out for sushi that night, but it really did teach me that the stuff I take for granted here in America ain't gonna be available in other countries. Like internet speeds, toilets, and freedom of speech. I got a nice first shave. And now I'm walking the streets of Hong Kong. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do, just improvise and just have fun. Uh, hey Grizz, are you okay? I spare claims copyright infringement. My fellow Americans, don't dress like this when you're on vacation. So I'm at another grocery store here in Hong Kong and I gotta say, you're in for quite a surprise. Coffee jelly. I wonder if it's good as macchiato gummies. I just entered the place and I'm already coming across some weird food. And we have plenty of pocky back in the States. But we don't get double chocolate pocky. Taking a few of these. Smuggling fees be down, I'm taking these home. This is a knuckle cracking stand. So if you're a plucky sheltered tourist who comes to Hong Kong and complains about how disgusting it is that they have all oh, those roast goose corpses and hanging in the windows of the restaurants, have your will sorted out, cause, cause they end up to here with people like you. Later that night, I went to a restaurant that had an awesome view of the Hong Kong skyline. And there I found out that in Hong Kong, sodas are called aerated water. You know, while I'm waiting for my food to arrive, I think I should key you in on some uh, Asian eating etiquette given the, um, the recent events. First thing are your chopsticks. Treat them seriously. Don't pretend to drum them and uh, don't stick them in your food and have them pointing out like radio antennas. Okay, that is very disrespectful. Mm. Oh, and another thing, once you're done eating, you pay for everything, don't tip. It's frowned upon in Asian cultures. Which is fine with me, by the way. Slow roasted pork belly in a sweet sour sauce. You know you want this. Once my moment of food porn was over, I walked across to check out the Hong Kong skyline at night. Oh, and by the way, you've got to experience Hong Kong at night. I mean, 
we've all seen it on TV and in pictures, but you know, I'm just gonna shut up. Just come to Hong Kong. I can't explain it. So if you look out at the uh, Hong Kong skyline at night, you can see that a lot of uh, see that a lot of buildings have electronic displays on them. But you gotta say that one right there is uh, kind of inappropriate for the situation. Get them quick. Our cars are scared priceless. <laughs> oh, my neck. So heading to the Hong Kong Peak Tramp today and I'm taking the MRT. What could possibly be wrong? Once they crow barred me out, I made my way to the Hong Kong Peak Tram. Don't forget, when you're in Hong Kong, <coughs> enjoy some authentic Hong Kong cuisine. They're doing repairs on the track while it's operating. Oh, I feel safe. Please, white tourists, stop wearing baseball hats on vacation, okay? Just wear sunscreen, maybe a pair of sunglasses, you'll be okay. Oh, jeez. Rickety old wooden railway. Oh, boy. Ah, oh, jeez, this ride's doing a number on my back. Stupidly dressed tourist. Am I in Hong Kong or Disneyland? After a while, we made it to the top. I went up to the top observation deck of the peak and I saw a gorgeous view of Hong Kong. Okay, actually no, it looked more like this. But again, thanks to color correction in post. Don't worry, here's better looking footage. You know, after I was up there, I noticed something. Hong Kong isn't that uh, handicap accessible. So if you're someone who needs a wheelchair, just keep in mind that um, certain places will be off limits. You know, for example, the Sky Terrace where I went up to, there doesn't seem to be an elevator. Yeah, sorry grandma, can't come. Is it for these guys to pick up someone's puke? As I pondered that very question, I made my way to my next stop in Hong Kong. There's even a Disneyland Resort here in Hong Kong. Anyway, on to the next location. Yep, I went to the entrance of Hong Kong Disneyland just for a quick throwaway gag. I don't know, this is probably just me, but there's something pretty unsettling of hearing cartoon characters not speaking in their native tongue. Anyway, I took a ride on the Lantau Island gondola, so I can head to the big Tiantan Buddha. As I rode the gondola to the peak, I was amazed by the sheer beauty of Lantau Island. Actually, no, it was still pretty hazy. In fact, the haze was worse here than it was at the peak. And trust me, I tried my hardest to make this look as clean as possible in post, but it was no use. It was just way too hazy. So if you're willing to put up with less than stellar cinematography, I finally made my way to the top. First, to get to the Buddha, you gotta go through this, uh, let's be honest, rather inauthentic recreation of an ancient Chinese village. I mean, come on, look. There's a Starbucks here. Again, uh, my fellow Americans, I must ask, please stop dressing like this. Fanny pack. Really? Listen, I know I rant a lot about how tourists dress, but guys, come on, you look like dorks. What's the point of wearing the hat? It's to protect yourself from the sun? Just wear sunscreen. In fact, I wore neither and I still looked okay. 
Why shorts? I mean, I understand if it's incredibly hot, but it was like, what, 60 degrees in Hong Kong? There was no need for shorts. And those stupid hats, come on. Wearing stupid hats is the reason why I left the brony fandom. Anyway, rant done, back to the video. Hey, can you give me a ride to the Buddha? How about you? Will you give me a ride to the Buddha? I have an octopus card. And there she is. The big Buddha. Oh, I have to go all the up these stairs. Yeah, I'm done here. And don't worry. Buddhism is, tends to be a peaceful religion. So I don't know what the Buddhist equivalent of hell is, but I'm pretty sure they don't... I'm not going there. Maybe a passive aggressive comment at the most. Hey CRJ, in addition to cooking, how about making health and fitness fun as well? Oh my god. Chinese fireworks. Oh, if airport security wasn't at unconstitutional levels, I'd take some home. Well, didn't she? Uh, these guys look happy despite all the crazy stuff China's currently doing to them. So I'm at this Chinese uh, little house and uh, I'm going to keep it really food centric for, for today. I uh, woke up this morning just feeling so burnt out so you know it will happen when you're on vacation so just you know take it easy and probably accept the fact that you probably won't be able to see everything. One thing you can try in Hong Kong are these uh, egg puff waffles. They don't only sort of sell them at uh, food stands like this one here. Let's see what they taste like. Mm. They're a lot more flavorful than they look. Trust me on that. While I was out, I came across a big dog. In fact, I saw plenty of dogs. It turns out it was Chinese New Year and it was the year of the dog. So Hong Kong was decorated with all kinds of canine commodities and mutt mementos. Seeing all those dogs in Hong Kong made me miss this little flea bag. Say hi to all my subscribers. It's your year in China. It's the year of you in China. Yes. I'm at another Chinese supermarket because you can't just visit one and say, okay, I'm done. There's more delicacies here than you can dream of. Like this. I heard of white washing, but this is just crazy. You know what? I'm feeling fancy. I'm gonna go grab a bottle of wine and. You know, I saw a nice selection of Chinese pilsners over there. Unfortunately, before I could get drunk, it was time for me to fly home. So I'm at the airport. No! I'm actually at the train station. But here's what's cool about Hong Kong in town check in. I don't have to lug my heavy ass bag to the airport because I really did think my bag got heavier. Oh, another thing great about in-town check-in, I already have my tickets. I can waltz straight through security. Yo, Garcetti. LA needs this. I'm at Hong Kong airport. And wow, I swear I can fit the entire town of Lamita in here. Eh, no waiting line for me. I guess I am the Chad Traveler after all. Now before I leave Hong Kong, I must try this one thing one more time. Roast goose. Now it's getting a little better, put the camera down. And on that succulent mouth-watering note, that was my trip to Hong Kong. Oh, and by the way, I'm not ready to return to YouTube yet. But don't worry, things are looking... sunny. <laughs>